A pleasant morning, 7SDE. Today's discussion will be about Quarter 3, Module 3, Typhoon, Flood, and Landslides. Objectives Explain the causes and effects of natural disasters to humans and the environment, such as typhoon, flood, and landslides. At the end of this module, you are expected to 1. Define typhoon, flood, and landslide. 2. Describe how typhoon forms. 3. Make a flyer on safety measures before, during, and after a typhoon. 4. Distinguish among types of floods, its causes, and effects. 5. Collect recent data, photo, or clippings or records on highly disastrous flooding in the Philippines. 6. Identify the different kinds of landslides, its causes, and effects. And 7. Explain how human activities trigger landslides. What I know Choose the letter of the best answer, write the letter of your choice on your answer sheet. See pages 2 to 3 of quarter 3, module 3. What's in? Find the different soil pollutants hidden in the puzzle. Words may be hidden horizontally, vertically, and diagonally. Use the leftover letters to reveal the hidden message. So here are the different soil pollutants hidden in the puzzle. So we have number one, insecticides, next, herbicides, lead, mercury, pesticides, zinc, copper, and nickel. Using the leftover words, we will be able to reveal the hidden message. And the hidden message is... Pollution is the action of polluting, especially by environmental contamination with man-made waste. What's new? Fill in the blocks. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. So let us answer across. Number three. Tropical cyclone with circulating wind speed beyond 60 km per hour to 118 km per hour. The answer for this is storm. Next, number four. The sudden and massive downward movement of rocks is called landslides. Five. Tropical cyclone with circulating wind speed of more than 118 km per hour is called a typhoon. Down, number one, tropical cyclone with circulating wind speed of 60 km per hour or less is called a depression. Next, number two, an overflow of water that submerges land that is usually dry is called floods. We are going to begin our discussion of Module 3 with natural disasters, starting with typhoon. A tropical cyclone begins as a low-pressure center over an ocean with strong circulating winds. The center of a cyclone is an area of calm with winds of less than 24 km per hour and in some cases, no winds at all. Warm air rises in this area of calm called eye. So here we have a picture of how tropical storms are formed. High humidity and ocean temperatures of over 26 degrees Celsius are major contributing factors. So, water evaporates from the ocean surface and comes into contact with a mass of cold air forming clouds. So, if the ocean temperature is 26 degrees Celsius and above, water begins to evaporate due to heat. So, what happens to water as it evaporates? it rises. So, yung warm air natin magra-rise and it will come in contact with a mass of cold air. So, pag nagkaroon sila ng contact with each other, clouds will be formed. Next, a column of low pressure develops at the center. Here, karon ng low pressure. Winds form around the column. So, doon sa uh, gitna ng ating uh, column of low pressure area, winds form. 
As the pressure in the central column or the eye weakens, the speed of the wind around it increases. So, habang yung pressure dito sa column natin sa gitna ay pababa ng pababa or pahina ng pahina, uh, yun namang speed ng wind around it increases. In the northern hemisphere where the Philippines is located, winds circulate in counterclockwise direction. So, ano ibig sabihin pag sinabing counterclockwise? So, kabaliktara ng ikot ng kamay ng orasan. So, this is in counterclockwise direction. When circulating wind is over the ocean, energy carrying water vapor is continuously supplied by the warm ocean surface to the warm rising air. So, habang yung ating uh, wind ay umiikot sa ocean, sa karagatan, uh, the winds carry water vapor coming from the ocean. Next, as the water vapor condenses, it forms clouds and rain. During this process, energy is given off, resulting air to rise faster. So, habang yung ating water vapor ay nagko-condense, it forms clouds and then rain. And energy is given off, resulting to air rising faster. So, what happens next is, Air pressure below the rising air decreases further, causing more humid air to move into the eye faster. A continuous supply of energy carried by water vapor increases wind speed. So next, here is classification of tropical cyclone according to the strength of the associated maximum sustained winds. So, tropical depression up to 61 kilometers per hour, tropical storm, 62 to 88 kilometers per hour, severe tropical storm, 89 to 117 kilometers per hour, typhoon, 118 to 220 kilometers per hour, and super typhoon if it's exceeding 220 kilometers per hour. The term typhoon is used only in the northwestern part of the Pacific Ocean. In the northeastern part of the Pacific Ocean and in the northern part of the Atlantic Ocean, the equivalent term is hurricane. So let's take a look at this map below. So in the northern hemisphere to the west of the Pacific Ocean, we call this weather disturbance as typhoons. So that includes the Philippines. In the southern hemisphere, they call this weather disturbance as cyclones. Next, to the northeastern part of the Pacific Ocean and in the northern part of the Atlantic Ocean, they call this weather disturbance as hurricanes. Studies conducted by the Philippine Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA show that Kasiguruan, Quezon, has recorded the highest number of typhoons passing over it, followed by Nueva Ecija, Nueva Vizcaya, Samar, Leyte, the coast of eastern and northern Luzon, and that of the Bicol region are also frequently visited by typhoons. So, here is Quezon. So, in this area, Kasiguruan, Quezon is located and it has recorded the highest number of typhoons passing over it. Followed by Nueva Ecija, Nueva Vizcaya, next, Samar in eastern Visayas, Leyte, the coast of eastern, this one, eastern Luzon, and northern Luzon and that of the Bicol region are also frequently visited by typhoons. Southern Mindanao and Southern Visayas Islands and Palawan are seldom affected by the strong winds of typhoon, but these areas are not completely free of typhoons. Occasional typhoons that develop and move across the West Philippine Sea generally affect the Western Visayas, and Northern Palawan. 
Tropical cyclones that affect the Philippines may form in any month of the year. They seldom occur from January to March but are more frequent during the southwest monsoon from June to October. So, uh, mas madalas tayong magkaroon ng tropical cyclones during the month of June to October, during the southwest monsoon season, or yung tinatawag natin sa Tagalog na hanging habagat. So, strong winds coming from the south of the Philippines carries large amount of water vapor that uh, when it passes over the Philippines, they uh, bring about lots of rain. So, tropical cyclones occur most frequently in the month of August. They develop only in areas of existing weather disturbances, usually over the ocean. So, ang mga tropical uh, cyclones, they form over the ocean. Most of the tropical cyclones that affect the Philippines develop east of the country, usually over the Pacific Ocean. So, in this picture, you are going to see that a tropical storm is forming in the Pacific Ocean. So, uh, as it develops, it may pass over the Philippines and bring about a uh, tropical cyclone. The size of a typhoon varies from a diameter of 100 kilometers to 1,000 kilometers or more. The air pressure progressively decreasing toward the center of the eye of the typhoon. So, here is a satellite image of a typhoon that is near the Philippines. So, the size of a typhoon may be uh, 100 kilometers or 1,000 kilometers in diameter. Tapos, yung air pressure ay pababa ng pababa toward the center of the eye of the typhoon. So, ang uh, air pressure sa gitna is very, very low. So, kaya nga ang tawag sa kanya, di ba, LPA, uh, an area where there is low pressure. Next, the surrounding winds at the surface tend to move around and toward the eye. These circulating winds rise faster near the eye than farther away, leaving low pressure center in the typhoon. So at the center of a typhoon is a low pressure center. So the eye varies in diameter from 8 to 80 kilometers. Here, the air is calm and the sky is generally clear, but around the eye are clouds, strong winds, and rains. So, dito sa satellite image natin, so yung makikita nyong pinakagitna, that is the, again, the eye of the typhoon. So, in that area, ano daw ang meron? Uh, the air is calm, payapa, the sky is generally clear. Pero, surrounding the eye, dito sa area na yan, yung mga nakapalibot sa kanya. Uh, around those areas, there are clouds, strong winds, and rains. Tapos, kapag dumaan itong bagyo na to sa Philippines, Oh, yun ang dadalhin niya sa bansa natin. Clouds, strong winds, and rains. Next, pag-asa usually starts tracking a tropical cyclone the moment it enters the Philippine Area of Responsibility, also called as PAR. The gathering of data and the analyzing and interpreting of atmospheric conditions such as air pressure, wind speed, and wind direction air temperature, and humidity, rainfall, and cloud cover within this area is the Philippines' responsibility. So here we have the Philippine area of responsibility. So kapag pumasok na daw ang bagyo sa Philippine area of responsibility, so that is when pag-asa uh, does its job. So uh, minomonitor na nila yung uh, uh, bagyo, Nagagather sila ng data and ina-analyze and interpret nila yung iba't ibang atmospheric conditions. Okay, so we call this as PAR, Philippine Area of Responsibility. Next, when a tropical cyclone is located, the agency can assess and forecast whether of which areas are likely to be affected. So, kapag pumasok na sa Philippine Area of Responsibility ang isang tropical cyclone, so, si Pag-asa, magbibigay na siya ng weather forecast. Tapos, babanggitin na niya yung mga areas in the Philippines that are uh, likely to be affected by the tropical cyclone. 
So, si Pag-asa rin will be responsible for issuing warning signals to these areas. So, here is Pag-asa's revised storm warning system as of May 2015. So, signal number 1, signal number 2, signal number 3, 4, and signal number 5. So, before, uh, meron lang tayong apat na signal. Signal 1, 2, 3, 4. Pero after uh, Super Typhoon Yolanda, nagkaroon na tayo ng hanggang signal number 5. So, signal number 1, winds of 30 to, 4, to 60 kilometers per hour in the next 24 hours. Signal number 2, 61 to 120 kilometers per hour in the next 24 hours. Signal number 3, winds of 121 to 170 kilometers per hour in the next 18 hours. Signal number 4, winds of 171 to 220 kilometers per hour in the next 12 hours. And signal number 5, winds of more than 220 kilometers per hour in the next 12 hours. So, itong updated tropical cyclone classifications, we have tropical depression, tropical storm, severe tropical storm, typhoon, and super typhoon. So, kanina sa previous slide, nabanggit ko na kung ano yung wind speed para sa bawat tropical classification. So, you may read on this later. Next, Pag-asa has assigned local names to a tropical cyclone as it moves into or form as a tropical depression in our area of responsibility, even if the cyclone has had an international name assigned to it. So, ang ating uh, uh, pag-asa, ang ating uh, weather agency, nag assign sila ng local names. Nagbibigay sila ng mga uh, pangalan dun sa mga bagyong pumapasok sa Philippine area of responsibility kahit na merong international name itong mga bagyong ito. So, Pag-asa retired the names if a cyclone has caused at least 1 billion in damage and or have caused at least 300 deaths within the Philippines. So, kapag yung isang uh, bagyo ay nag ng severe damage sa bansa natin, at least 1 billion, o kaya ang pinatay ng bagyong ito ay 300 people, all over the Philippines, tinatanggal na ng pag-asa ito sa kanilang listahan ng uh, names ng mga bagyo. So, here are some examples of names of typhoons. So, 2021 Philippine Tropical Cyclone Names. Auring, Bising, Crising, Dante, Emong, Fabian, Goryo, Waning, and hanggang dun sa dulo, si Soraida. Okay? Tapos, ito yung mga examples ng retired tropical cyclone names. So, kaya sila ni-retire kasi sobrang lalakas nila. Okay? Marami silang sinira sa Philippines. Marami silang buhay na uh, kinuha. So, sino to mga nag-retire na, na names ng bagyo? Ambo, si Quinta, si Rolly, and remember Ulysses? Yung pinaka-recent nating bagyo last year lang. So, no, sa 2024, ito ang mga replacements nila, Aghon, Kerubin, Romina, and Upang. Next, a typhoon can cause much damage. The winds are strongest over the ocean where large waves add to the destruction. Fortunately, there is usually less to destroy in the ocean than on land. Typhoons cause major flooding through their intense rainfall and storm surges. So here are some pictures of the damage brought about by a typhoon. So if there's a typhoon, uh, the winds are very, very strong over the ocean. Tapos meron pang large waves that add to the destruction. So, after a typhoon, this is what happens to places near the coastal area. So, houses are destroyed, plants, trees are also destroyed, and uh, so much destruction and death happens. So, do you still remember Typhoon Yolanda? So, Super Typhoon Yolanda or Haiyan made landfall in the Philippines on November 8, 2013. Yolanda had significant economic impacts. This include destruction of major rice, corn, and sugar-producing areas, affecting the country's international trade and farmers' income. 
So here is a picture of the devastation brought about by Super Typhoon Yolanda. So ang picture na ito ay sa Tacloban. So tinan nyo yung nangyari sa place nila. Total wipe out. So nasira lahat, lahat ng bahay sira. So walang nakatayo, kung meron man, konting-konti na lang. At yung mga structures na natirang nakatayo ay may sira rin. So in the, in the picture below, we have uh, coconut trees. Tapos pati sila ay parang na bulldoze. No? So bagsak lahat ng mga punong yan. So ito ay dahil kay Super Typhoon Yolanda. So, business and tourism were affected due to severe damage in airport of Tacloban City. So, here is Tacloban City Airport, this picture. Uh, look at my pointer. So, dito sa area na to, dito nagla-landing ang mga, mga airplanes. Tapos, you can see that it's flooded. Okay? Tapos, yung pinaka-airport itself, yung office, ay uh, natuklap ang mga, mga bubong. So, so much damage has been done by Super Typhoon Yolanda. Boats and equipment used in fishing communities were destroyed, affecting their livelihood. So, uh, people in Tacloban, ang kanilang uh, uh, major source of livelihood ay fishing. Dahil malapit sila sa dagat. So, because of Super Typhoon Yolanda, their boats and other equipments were destroyed. That's why they had a hard time after Super Typhoon Yolanda. So, madaming nasirang mga bangka at barko. Social impacts include thousands of people killed, injured, lost family, members, and traumatized. Lots of people were left homeless and some were relocated. There was a sudden rise in the incidence of diseases due to lack of sanitation access to clean and potable water, scarcity of food supply, loss of shelter, and insufficient medication. So because of Super Typhoon Yolanda, many people were killed, injured, uh, nawala ng family members, na traumatized. Tapos, marami rin sa mga kababayan natin sa Tacloban were left homeless, nawala sila ng tirahan. Kita nyo naman, di ba? Sira lahat ng mga uh, bahay doon sa Tacloban. Tapos, uh, diseases became rampant. Marami nagkasakit dahil nga wala silang access sa clean and potable water. Wala rin silang food. Wala silang shelter. Wala rin silang medicines. So, environmental impacts include destruction of homes and businesses in coastal areas due to widespread floods. Hectares of farmland was affected, thousands of trees were uprooted, leading to loss of habitat with resulting effect on wildlife. Major roads were blocked by trees and were impassable. Here's another picture of Tacloban after Super Typhoon Yolanda. So makikita nyo dito na yung mga roads became impossible because of the uh, different debris that were found in the middle of the road. The second natural disaster that we will be discussing is flood. So a flood is rising and overflowing of water that submerges land that is usually dry. So kapag ang isang area ay pangkaraniwang tuyo, tapos bigla nagkaroon ng, ng uh, overflowing of water, then we have flood. So, flooding may occur as an overflow of water from water bodies in which the water overtops or breaks dikes, resulting in some of that water escaping its usual boundaries or it may occur on saturated ground brought about by excessive precipitation. So, ang flooding, dalawang bagay yan. So, pwedeng yung isang uh, body of water, pwedeng river, lake, ay nag-overflow. So, dahil nag-overflow yung tubig natin, uh, nagkaroon ng baha dun sa mga areas near that body of water. Pwede rin naman na uh, walang water body, water body dun sa isang area pero nagkaroon ng flooding dahil saturated ang ground. Punong-puno na ang lupa ng tubig brought about by excessive precipitation. So, yung ulan sobrang lakas, walang tigil. Kaya yung lupa, di na niya kayang i-absorb yung uh, rainfall. So, nagkaroon tayo ng flooding. 
Human activity such as deforestation and removal of wetlands, changes in waterway course such as with leaves, and larger environmental issues such as climate change and sea level rise often increase the intensity and frequency of flooding. So, because of the different uh, human activities na ginagawa natin, uh, nagkakaroon tayo ng flooding. So, one of the human activities that causes flooding is deforestation. So, dahil uh, nire-remove natin ang mga trees that could actually uh, absorb excess rainfall. So, dahil nawawala na yung mga trees na to, flooding of course. So, because also of the different human activities, meron pa ibang iba mga environmental issues na nag-a-arise like climate change and sea level rise. So, these two environmental issues also causes flooding. So, let's discuss the types of flood. Fluvial floods or river floods occur when the level of water in a river or lake rises and overflows onto the surrounding banks and nearby areas due to excessive rain. So, kapag sobrang lakas ng ulan, minsan yung mga rivers natin, tsaka yung mga lakes natin ay napupuno rin. So, pag napuno sila, they may overflow. Tapos, yung mga areas na malapit dito sa mga rivers or lakes na to, they become flooded. Just like in this picture. So, another type of flood is called pluvial floods. So, they occur when heavy and continuous precipitation occurs. So, kapag sobrang lakas ng ulan, bawa wala namang river, wala namang lake na malapit dito sa area na to. Pero tuloy-tuloy ang pag-ulan, it also causes flood. And flood brought about by heavy and continuous raining or precipitation is called pluvial. So, yung una ay fluvial with the letter F. Tapos yung pangalaw naman ay pluvial. So, yung fluvial floods ay uh, due to the overflowing of river or lakes. Yung namang pluvial floods ay due to heavy and continuous precipitation or raining. So, we have types of fluvial flood. So, una ay surface water floods. So, surface water floods happen when an urban drainage system is obstructed. So, kapag barado ang drainage system and water flows out into the streets and nearby structures, we have surface water floods. This type of flood occurs slowly which provides people time to move to a safe or higher places. So, ito example natin ng surface water flood. So, mabaga lang ang uh, pagdaloy uh, ng tubig sa mga surface water floods. Kaya, yung mga tao have time to evacuate. So, nangyayari lang ito kapag ang drainage system is obstructed. So, bakit ba nagkakaroon ng obstruction or pagbabara sa mga drainage system natin. So, syempre, ito ay dahil sa basura. Number 2.2, we have flash floods. So, flash floods are characterized by an intense high-velocity torrent of water caused by torrential rain falling within a short amount of time within the vicinity or on the nearby elevated area. Ang mga flash floods Uh, intense ang pagbulusok ng tubig. Tapos high velocity, napakabilis. So, nangyayari ito kapag super lakas ng ulan. Okay? Super lakas ng volume ng, uh, ng rainfall. Tapos mabilis na mabilis lang itong nangyayari. So, they can also occur through sudden release of water from water reservoir such as such as dam. So, kapag yung mga dams ay nagpakawala ng tubig ng bigla-bigla, Kagaya na nangyari nung uh, last year, nung bagyong Ulysses, di ba nagpakawala ng tubig sa mga dams uh, here in, uh, uh, in Central Luzon. So, nung nagbukas yung dam, nagkaroon ng flash floods. So, maraming mga, mga nasira na mga, na mga infrastructures, mga properties, and lives were also taken. So, these types of floods are dangerous. Napakadelikado na mga flash floods. And aside from dangerous, they are also destructive because of the force of water and the debris that is usually swept up in the flow. So here we have uh, the aftermaths of a flash flood. So pagkatapos ng flash flood, take a look at what happened. So nabaon yung uh, kanilang kalsada sa putek. 
Tapos, makikita mo yung mga debris, mga kahoy. So, malamang itong mga kahoy na ito ay galing sa bundok. Tapos, tinangay na lang ng flash flood pababa. Okay? So, yung mga vehicles na tenga, uh, hindi na maalis dun sa place na yun. Okay? So, another type of flood is called coastal flood. It occurs right along a coastline sa tabing dagat. So, coastal flood is the inundation of land areas along the coast by seawater. Common reasons of coastal flooding are intense windstorm events occurring at the same time as high tide and tsunamis. So, kapag merong mga uh, bagyo, tapos sinabayan pa ng high tide, dyan nagkakaroon ng coastal flooding. Okay? Just like in the picture here. So, kung makikita nyo yung mga bahay malapit sa sa dagat ay na nabaha na siya, nabaha na sila no so sinabayan ng high tide yung uh, intense wind storm so storm surge is an abnormal rise in seawater level as a result of atmospheric pressure changes and wind associated with storm so kapag mayroong mga bagyo isa sa mga kinatatakutan ng mga nakatira sa sa mga coastal areas ay itong storm surge So, it often causes devastating loss of life and property. So, this is what happened in Tacloban. Nagkaroon ng storm surge during Super Typhoon Yolanda. That's why uh, so many people lost their homes, lost uh, their lives, lost a family member. So, what are the effects of floods? So, flooding of areas used as socio-economic activities creates a variety of negative impacts. So, number one is loss of lives and property. So, kapag nagkaroon ng flooding, immediate impacts of flooding consists of loss of human life, pagkamatay, damage to property, destruction of crops, loss of livestock, non-functioning of infrastructure facilities, and deterioration of health condition due to the lack of sanitation, food, water, shelter, and medication. So, kapag nagkaroon ng flooding, sunod-sunod na ang mga effects nito sa buhay ng tao. So, to sum up, number one, loss of lives and property. Number two, Loss of livelihoods, kawalan ng kabuhayan. So, after flooding, economic activities stop, leading to loss of livelihood. So, the production assets, whether in agricultural or industry, hinder its regular activities due to damage and disrupted infrastructure such as power plants, roads, and bridges. So, kapag nagkaroon ng mga damages sa mga power plants, roads, and bridges, so, this will surely affect the Uh, economic activities of a uh, certain place and it would lead to loss of livelihood. So, mawawala ng trabaho yung mga tao. Number three, decrease purchasing and production power. So, flood-prone areas results in reduction in purchasing power and loss of land value. Damage to infrastructure causes long-term effects due to inaccessibility to clean water and electricity, transport, communication, education, and healthcare. The capital required for maintaining production is instead used for rehabilitation, relocation of people, and removal of property from flood-affected areas. So, sa isang area, kapag yung area ay uh, bahain, uh, ang nangyayari, yung pondo na para sana, para sa pagtaas ng ekonomiya ng lugar na yon ay ginagamit para sa rehabilitation, okay, Relocation ng mga tao, tapos uh, removal of uh, debris sa mga flood-affected areas. So, yung purchasing and production power dun sa lugar na yun, bumababa. Meaning, yung ekonomiya nila, uh, bumababa rin. Number four, mass migration. So, recurrent flooding may lead to mass migration or population displacement. Kapag ang isang lugar ay bahain, usually yung mga tao umaalis dun sa lugar na yun. So, kapag umalis sila, lilipat sila sa ibang lugar. So, moving to develop urban areas contributes naman to overcrowding in the cities and end up living in marginal lands which is also a flood-prone places. Number five, psychosocial effects. So, yung trauma 
brought about by the loss of loved ones, displacement from one's home, loss of property and livelihoods, and disruption to business and social affairs can create lasting psychological impacts. So, imagine nyo itong bata na ito, kung uh, paano siya naapektuhan ng pagbaha na to. So, posible na itong bata na to ay nagkaroon ng uh, uh, trauma. So, it will lead to uh, lasting psychological impact sa kanya. Number six, another effect of flood, hindering economic growth and development. So, ito yung parang sinabi ko kanina about economy. So, recurrent flooding in a region may discourage long-term investments by the government and private sector. So, syempre nga naman, kung yung isang lugar ay bahain, wala mag invest doon sa area na yun. So, destructions brought about by floods may lead to high cost of goods and services, delaying its development programs and compromising its economy. So, kapag nagkaroon ng pagbaha sa isang lugar, syempre yung pondo para sa sa lugar na yon ay mapupunta sa sa rehabilitation ng area instead na uh, ilaan yung pondo para sa mga development programs and uh, other uh, programs na magbubus ng economy. 7. Political implications. So, incapable of performing relief operations during major flood events may lead to public discontent or distrust in the authorities and national governments. So, kapag mayro mga pagbaha, tapos hindi agad nakaresponde ang ating mga mga government uh, uh, employees like the police, the soldiers, and the Bureau of Fire, minsan uh, sinisisi natin sa gobyerno. Tapos nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, public discontent or distress in uh, our authorities and in the national government. The third uh, natural disaster that we will discuss is landslide. So, it is the rapid downward movement of a mass of rock or soil on a slope section of land. So, look at this picture. Makikita ninyo na yung uh, lupa dito sa bundok ay uh, bumagsak pababa dito sa area na to kung saan mayroong mga taong nakatira. So, mayroong mga buildings and mga bahay sa baba ng bundok and uh, nagkaroon ng landslide. So, landslides are often triggered by factors that make the slope unstable, such as intense rainfall, sobrang pag-ulan, earthquakes, volcanic activity, and human activities. So, uh, in this case, probably there was an intense rainfall uh, at dahil sa sobrang pag-ulan na yun, lumambot yung lupa, kaya nag-slide pababa yung lupa. So, landslide is an example of mass wasting. Next, let's discuss types of landslides. The types of landslides can be differentiated classes of materials involved and the mode of movement. A mode of classification system based on these parameters is shown in the table below. So we have table 1, types of landslides. First one, first column, type of movement. Second column, type of material. Tapos, the type of material is classified further as bedrock or engineering soils. So, mga type of movement natin, falls, topples, slides, pwedeng rotational, translational, lateral spreads, flows, and complex. So, here are the different types of landslides. Let's start with slides. So, ang slides, mass movements happen when a distinct zone of weakness a section of soil or rock suddenly gives way down a slope from more stable underlying material. So, ang mga types of slides natin ay, first one, rotational landslide, translational landslide, and a block slide. Second one ay falls, Sudden mass movement of detached rocks and boulders from steep slopes or cliffs. So here is a picture of what happens during a rockfall. Number three, topples. Forward movement of a mass of rock out of a slope usually driven by gravity and water in cracks in the rocks. So ito naman yung topple. Next, number four, flows. So, pag sinabing flows, mixtures of water, rock, and sediment. And we have several types of flows. First one ay debris flow. 
So it's a form of rapid mass movement in which a mixture of loose soil, rock, organic matter, air, and water move as a slurry that flows down slope. These are usually caused by intense surface water flow due to heavy rain. So pag sobrang lakas ng ulan, kagaya dito sa picture sa letter F, so yung loose soil, rock, organic matter, air, and water, nagmumove siya ng sobrang bilis pababa in, in a slurry. So we call it as debris flow. Uh, next, we have debris avalanche, a variation of very rapid to extremely rapid debris flow. So pag yung debris flow ay naging mas intense, it becomes a debris avalanche. Next, letter C, earth flow. We usually begin on the upper part of a slope where the materials liquefies and runs out. The movement often set off by heavy rainfall. The movement may be slow or very fast depending on the amount of water present. So kapag sobrang ulan, uh, nagliliquify yung lupa, tapos uh, babagsak na lang siya. So, yung movement, pwedeng slow, pwedeng fast, depende daw sa amount of water present. So, this is earth flow. Ang mud flow naman ay mas intense lang na earth flow. A rapid earth flow consisting of material with high water content suddenly turns to liquid mud and slows down a slope. Kung sa earth flow ay hindi pa ganun ka labnaw yung, uh, yung naliquify na material dito sa mud flow, yun. Okay, so mas mataas yung water content kaysa sa lupa. Creep is the slow downslope movement of material under gravity. So this is a picture of creep. And number five, we have lateral spreads. It is commonly formed on very gentle slopes or flat area and have rapid fluid-like flow movement. It is caused by liquefaction or the process whereby saturated loose cohesion, less sediments are transformed from a solid into a liquefied state. So, ang lateral spreads, nangyayari lang siya sa mga flat areas, tapos uh, it is caused by liquefaction. Yung lupa na transform from solid to liquid, kaya siya nag-landslide. So, here again are the different types of landslide. So, we have rotational landslide, translational landslide, block slide, rockfall, topple, debris flow, debris avalanche, earth flow, tapos pag mas intense pa, mud flow, then we have creep, and last one ay lateral spread. So, uh, who are affected during landslides? So, pag may landslides, syempre, number one affected, humans. So, people may be injured or killed during landslides. It may also destroy their properties and loss of livelihoods, such as these people here. They died due to a landslide. Number two, animals. Animals' habitat may be destroyed and inadequate or scarcity of food since the landslide would wash down plants and bushes. So, here we have a very large landslide happening as well as in this picture. So, yung mga animals na nakatira dyan sa mga bundok na yan will be affected by this landslide. So, na-decrease yung mga plants and na pwede lang pagkunan ng mga food nila. And of course, number three, affected then during a landslide ay ang mga plant life. So, as materials wash down the slope, the plants are destroyed. So, kapag sila ay natabunan ng lupa or natangay ng uh, lupa pababa, then, syempre, mamamatay na sila. So, let's do the different activities. Independent Activity 1, what's my name? So, these are retired names of typhoons in the Philippines. Arrange the following letters to form a name. Write your answers on your answer sheet. So, yan. Number 2. Next, Independent Assessment 1, fill me out. So, fill in the following diagram with appropriate words or phrases. Choose your answer in the box. So, this is the formation of typhoon. So, identify nyo kung ano yung mga parts na to. So, ang choices nyo, cool, dense air, eye, eye wall, rain bands, warm, moist air. Next, Independent Activity 2, complete me. Uh, 
complete the graphic organizer with the necessary information. So, landslides are of different types, such as, next, landslides have effects on humans, animals, and plants. Tapos, sulat nyo dito kung ano yung effects na yun. Next, independent assessment 2. Form a word about human activities that trigger landslides by connecting the letters in the box. So, example, the movement of rock, earth, or debris down a sloped section of land. So, ang sagot ay landslide. So, sinimulan niya lang dito sa letter L, tas kinonek lang niya. Sunod-sunod lang naman. Okay? So, ganun din dito. So, number 1, defined as groundbreaking or making trench in ground. 2, the process of removing rock, sand, gravel, or other minerals from the ground. 3. The control and movement of water resources. 4. The extraction of valuable minerals or other geological materials from the earth. And 5. The removal of a forest which is then converted to a non-forest use. Independent Activity 3, arrange the jumbled letters for each item to identify the words being described. So, number 1, it occurs when an extreme rainfall creates a flood independent of an overflowing body of water. 2, flood which occurs right along a coastline. 3, an abnormal rise in seawater level that occurs during a typhoon. 4, an overflow of water that submerges land that is usually dry. And 5, it occurs when the level of water in a river, lake, or stream overflows onto the surrounding banks and nearby areas. Next, independent assessment tree. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, modified true or false. Write true if the statement is correct. And if the statement is false, change the underlined word to make the statement correct. So, number 1, typhoon is more violent than hurricane. 2, Low pressure area always develops into a typhoon. 3. Good water management of dams and dike reduces the risk of harm due to flooding. 4. As vegetation is cleared and land is covered with hard surface materials, the amount of water soaking into the soil declines. 5. Recurrent flooding may encourage long-term investments. Next, what I have learned. To measure what you have learned from the lessons, complete the statements with appropriate terms from the given work bank. So, you are going to complete this statement by uh, choosing from the words in the box. What I can do. So, in this activity, you are going to make a threefold brochure. Long band paper ang gamitin, folded into three equal parts about safety measures before, during, and after a typhoon. Use the figure below as reference. So, itutupin nyo yung long band paper into three parts. So, yung page 1, you are going to place here the title of your brochure. Example, safety measures before, during, and after a typhoon. Next, in this area, place here an eye-catching illustration of the main content of your brochure. Tapos dito sa part na to, place your name, grade level, and section, and your teacher's name. So sa page 1 yon. Page 2, content. So maglagay ka ng basic information about typhoon. Page 3, safety measures before a typhoon. Page 4, safety measures during a typhoon. Okay, page 5, safety measures after a typhoon. Tapos page 6, back cover illustration. Yan. Okay, so this will be the rubrics for the threefold brochure. So, content and message, and then design. So, doon ko kayo gagradean, base sa dalawang kategory na yan. So, dapat yung content and message ninyo identifies and explains eight or more safety measures before, during, and after a typhoon. Tapos yung design nyo dapat ay extremely eye-catching and appropriate for the topic, organized and neatly done. Next, assessment. Choose the letter of the best answer. Write your answer in your answer sheet. See pages 14 to 15 of quarter 3, module 3. Tapos, additional activity natin. Performance task number 3.3. Collect recent data, photo, clippings, or records on highly disastrous flooding in the Philippines. Cut and paste it in a short band paper. Identify the causes and effect of the flooding. So, para bigyan ko kayo ng matas na grade, uh, take a look at the rubric. 
So, gagradean ko kayo based on content, innovativeness, and neatness. So, yung content dapat correct and appropriate. Tapos, dapat imaginative kayo sa paggamit ng resources. Okay? Neatness, dapat neat, malinis ang gawa. So, ganito ang magiging sample format natin for the additional activity. So, three, three columns. First column, highly disastrous flooding in the Philippines. Tapos, paste nyo dito yung picture. Okay? Tapos, dito lagay nyo yung causes kung ba't nagkaroon ng pagbaha base dun sa inyong research. So, yung photo na kailangan, pwede i-research using Google. Tapos, make sure lang na na properly uh, identified nyo yung photo. So, saan lugar nangyari, kailan. Lagyan nyo ng date and place kung saan nangyari yung uh, flooding na yun sa inyong picture. So, be creative in doing your performance tasks. You may use Canva or other graphic design applications. So, kung wala namang kayong Canva, uh, pwede naman kayong gumamit ng, ng uh, bond paper, and then you may print the pictures, and then you may add designs. So, it's up to you. Okay? So, kung paano nyo pagagandahin para maganda rin ang grade ninyo. So, for quarter 3, uh, module 3, these are the things that you need to have on your answer sheet. So, kailangan may sagot sa what I know, what's more. Sa what's more, sasagutan ang independent activities 1, 2, 3, independent assessments 1, 2, 3. Tapos, sagutan din ang what I have learned, what I can do, assessment, and the additional activity. So, the additional activity will be your performance task for Module 3. So, upload your answer sheets in your Google Drive folder, uh, Path Environmental Science Quarter 3, Module 3. Tapos, pwede rin isend sa messenger ko in JPEG format. So, review module 3 and 4 for summative test number 2. Answer the test via Google Forms. Ang link to be sent uh, on schedule. So, wala pang schedule na binibigay ang principal para sa summative test number 1 and 2. So, later na lang. Basta, yan ang re-reviewin ninyo. Once again, thank you for attending our environmental science class. God bless you all.